Why, why is it that, uh, that pricing uh, random payoffs in financial markets is different from pricing them in insurance? Uh, so, you know, why, why in this formula here do we, do we have uh, Q probability, which is this artificial risk neutral probability, rather than actual probability P that we believe in? Uh, well, as I, as I tried to uh, explain before, it, it is because we can hedge. We can trade in the underlying assets which are cor correlated to the value of the option. Uh, in insurance, at least in traditional insurance, you cannot really hedge. Right? A traditional insurance company would sell claims, let's say, for uh, life insurance, and then they would not trade trying to hedge uh, probabilities uh, that people will die, okay? or, or that your house will burn down, or that your car will have an accident. They would not hedge that. They would, uh, although these days, for example, they can hedge if they, if they provide insurance for earthquakes or floods, they can actually buy derivatives which are related to weather uh, and and the weather, uh, act, you know, the, the earthquakes or whatever. So so these days there are there are parts of insurance that are mer merging with these ideas from pricing for pricing random payoffs in financial markets. But that's the main difference. The main difference is whether you hedge or not and how much you can hedge. That will change the probability and the expectations that you are computing as your price. If you're not hedging and you're just selling your insurance claims without doing anything else, you, you price under the actual probability, expected value under the actual probability. If you are uh, hedging with something, that's going to change your, the, the value of what you're selling. All right, so that I just wanted to mention that. But let's do one, uh, one more slide here and, and show uh, how you can get uh, the forward price in an elegant way, at least mathematically elegant, uh, although less intuitive, uh, using the Martingale pricing. We already know how to price forwards. Here I'm going to get a slightly more general formula using Martingale pricing. Okay, So let me take any, pr any type of discounting, maybe with random rate, whatever. Let me denote by D the, uh, the, uh, the process used for discounting, which typically, for example, with continuously compounded rate, was e to the minus rt. And uh, as we know, we want the forward price to be such, f of t, to be such that the value of the forward contract is zero at the initial time t. In terms of Martingale pricing, what is, what is this that has to be equal to zero? The value of the contract is the price of this payment in the future. I give you the underlying, you give me the forward price. How do we price this? We discount. Now the way to write discounting between lowercase t and capital T is by this ratio. Uh, you can check that, for example, that that's e to the minus r capital T minus small t. Uh, and then take conditional expectation under the Martingale probability uh, at time t. That's what you want to be zero. You want to find f of t so that this is zero. Right? So the f of t is the unknown. Okay? Uh, this actually we can compute. Uh, first of all, we are going to use the d times s, discounted s, which is here d times s, is a q martingale, right? which means that expectation, so I, I'm going to have an expectation here of d times s over d of t, but the d of t is, is known at time t, so I can treat it as a constant. Right? So, so I'm first computing, maybe I should write here, I'm, I'm first computing uh, e t d of t s of t over s of t. Uh, over d of t, sorry, over d of t. Oh, lowercase t. Now, th th this guy, this guy is known at time t, so it can go out. It's constant at time t. It's, it's known. So I'm gonna have one. This is equal to one over d of t. Expectation t under q. Everything is under q. Under q. D O capital T and S of capital T discounted underlying. Okay. 
But this thing here, I know what it is. That's this formula here. It's equal to d of t small lowercase s of t d of lowercase t s of lowercase t. Why? That's the Martingale property. Expectation of the future discounted price stock price underlying is today's price discounted price. Okay. So this is I this is you know this is d of t s of t uh, lowercase and this guy will cancel with this guy. I'm going to have just S of T. Okay. All right. Uh, and then similarly, this F of, F of T here, uh, that can be taken out of the expectation because that's known at time T. The forward price is known already at time, initial time of the contract. So I if I take that out, use this fact that this, can, you know, this cancellation here, and then multiply to, to move things to the other side, with d of t over d of capital T. We'll so d of small t also is known, so I don't have to take expectation. Uh, the only thing that remains is expectation under Q of d of capital T, because that may be random. If, the, if your discount factor is random. If it's not, you don't need expectation. But if it's random, you take, you take its expe expectation. OK, so this is now a general formula that I get for my forward contract. It's the stock pr initial stock price times the initial discount factor over the expectation under the Martingale property of the future discount factor yeah. at maturity. We can check that this gives us the same price as before. In the special case, let's say, with continuously compounded deterministic interest rate, in which case I don't need this expectation. So this is e to the minus rt. This is e to the minus r capital T. We can, I can write this ratio as e to the r capital T minus small t, yeah, which is the same for, I can call that a bank account or bond, whatever. That's the same formula I had before for the forward price. Yeah. Uh, I, I did it here uh, directly using the Martingale pricing formula. Uh, and um, you know, it works beautifully. And you get for these linear contracts, it's very easy to use. And the only thing we had to know is that the Martingale property really that's the only thing we had to know, and that this is the, this is the way to uh, write down the price, and that price has to be equal to zero for the forward contract. Okay. All right, so that's it for this set of slides.